Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Etienne Cordonnier. I work at Snap here in Vienna, and uh, I'm working on the Yocto uh, ecosystem on embedded devices. And I'm also the maintainer of a layer called uh, Meta Darwin, which uh, allows to run Yocto on macOS. Um, I prepared this talk to uh, mention some useful debug features which are available in Yocto and to raise awareness about some ways to debug embedded devices crashes with Yocto. Uh, as you know, embedded devices have their own set of uh, constraints and difficulties uh, due to limited uh, storage and bandwidth, etc. So it's uh, often very hard to debug this kind of crashes. So today I will talk uh, first about classical debuggable management with Yocto. Uh, then I will talk about core dumps using systemd. And finally, I will talk about kernel dump to debug uh, kernel crashes. So let's first talk about debug symbol management. So as you know, typically if a customer reports a bug and you have a relatively repeatable way of reproducing an issue, the first thing you would do is uh, use uh, classical debug symbols. Uh, in Yocto, the debug symbols are split in their own package called debug package. Um, the naive approach is to deploy all of those debug packages inside your image to your target. Uh, but this is often not doable. So as you can see here, uh, with uh, the Pocky, one of the Pocky standard images called the uh, core image full command line. The normal image is about 70 megabytes, but if I'm adding the debug, debug packages using uh, extra image features equal debug packages, the image is about 390 megabytes, so the, the overhead is quite huge. Um, even if you have a target where this is possible with enough storage, for instance, you are using a dev board, uh, this is often not a really nice solution because it's significantly slowing down your image creation time, flashing, as well as the, as the download of your builds. Um, one other way of handling debug symbols with Yocto is to use debug info D. Uh, so it's a standard distro feature of Yocto and which allows you to use a debug symbol server. So the way this works is that you have uh, OE debug info daemon which runs typically on your host PC or on a dedicated server which you populate using your CI build server. And the other counterpart to this is the debug info daemon which runs on target and then you use GDB to fetch the matching debug symbols to your binary. Uh, this is done using the build ID, which is stored inside the binary in the dedicated elf section. So here is an example. Uh, you can use uh, read f dash n. Uh, I did that with the TFTP daemon um, to display the, the build ID. So this is a unique ID which changes when your binary is changing, so you can have uh, several versions of the same binary and they will always find the, the matching uh, debug symbols. Uh, one other way to handle this is uh, mini debug info. Uh, this is a feature created by Fedora in 2012 already, so this was for Fedora 18. This is also supported by GDB and LibDwarf from LGTils. Uh, this is a reduced uh, debug symbol format. It only contains the function names and their addresses. So this is of course much smaller than traditional full debug symbols, which also contains uh, variables, file names, the line numbers inside those files, etc. Um, the way this works is that actually the mini debug info symbols have the format of an entire ELF file. This is then compressed with LZMA and injected as a new ELF section called GNU debug data inside your binary. Uh, 
so this was introduced by Red Hat a long time ago, but um, now this is available in Yocto since 2020 as, a, as of gate scars. This was only a function which was rendering the package step, which was injecting the mini debug info inside uh, all the binaries. And I sent a patch 2023 to extend it to uh, distro features. Um, so difference being that now it's also enabling uh, mini debug info support in GDB and systemd when you enable this distro feature. So this only enables the uh, corresponding package config uh, options. So GDB requires uh, XZ support and systemd also requires LQTL support in order to uh, support mini debug info. So here with the same example, if you have no symbol with core image full command line, the image is about 70 megabytes. Uh, with mini debug info, this is about 73 megabytes. So this is only a 4% overhead, which makes it in, in many use cases possible to always deploy this to your target. And yeah, like I said before, a full debug symbol was about 319 megabytes. So 400% overhead versus 355% overhead. Um, and uh, one last option which is often used to deal with uh, debug symbols is to generate the companion debug file system with Yocto. Um, this is done using the variable image generate debug FS and this generates a uh, root FS with a dash debug postfix, uh, which contains all the debug symbols associated with your normal root FS. Uh, you can also include this with uh, the Yocto SDK, the typical use case being when you are uh, yourself doing full Yocto builds, but when you have some other teams, for instance, or customers which are only working with a higher level of the software or on a single component, then you would distribute uh, the Yocto SDK, including the full uh, debug file system. This is, uh, of course, useful when you are using GDB server on target and pointing GDB on your host to the debug file system using the set sysroot option. So now let's talk about core dumb. So. Core dumps are useful in a use case where you have a crash which is not easy to reproduce. You don't have a clear way to reproduce this. And so typically you would get a core dump from a tester or a customer and then you have to investigate. Um, so a few basic things first. Uh, so when a user space software crashes in Linux, uh, the kernel calls a core dump handler if it's enabled. Uh, the way this is configured can be seen uh, proc, sys, kernel, core pattern. Um, so the way this works is that if you are only using those uh, percent uh, letter patterns, for instance, this percent P is for the process, uh, the, the PID of the process, the process which crashed, then you are only configuring the name of the files which the kernel will use to save the core dumps. But if the first uh, sign of the core pattern is the pipe, then you're uh, configuring a user space program to handle and process those core dumps. So in this case, uh, systemd core dump. Um, so yeah, systemd core dump handler is systemd core dump. Uh, in Yocto, you would enable it using the package config option of systemd called core dump. So for instance, in local.conf, it's disabled by default, but it's enabled by the mini debug info distro features. So the way this works is that the systemd core dump is logging core dumps to the journal. Uh, for debugging purpose, you can uh, see the full metadata, which is logged by systemd core dump to the journal using this journal control and filter by message ID. 
Uh, so for instance, you could see the name of the cordon file, etc., and a lot of more metadata than what is just logged in the journal. And uh, systemd also provides this command called cordon control, which is retrieving this uh, information from the journal in order to work with cordons. So the, the three most uh, used commands are uh, cordon list, which shows you the list of all the core dumps available in your journal. Uh, core dump info is used to show information on a specific core dump, and core dump control GDB is used to start a debugging session using a core dump and the associated binary. Uh, here I showed uh, an example of core dump control info uh, after I purposely uh, made the TFTP daemon crash. Um, you can see that this was a build with a mini debug info. So the call stacks is symbolicated. Uh, you can see, for instance, the main function inside the TFTP daemon. Uh, if you did not have debug symbols, of course, you would only see the addresses of those functions. The system decor dumped is invoked twice. So the first time it's invoked by the kernel as a kernel core handler, and it's running as root. Uh, it does not really process the core dump at this point. It's rather only writing the data to a dedicated socket. And this socket is then activating the system decor dump service, uh, which is then running without a root privilege. Uh, as a system D service. So this is done, of course, for uh, security reasons. You can see in the code how this works. Um, so this is a core dump code inside system D. There is this function called uh, system D listen file descriptors, which checks for file descriptors passed by the service manager. And so using this, you know if you are running as a kernel core handler or if you are running uh, started by the uh, system decordum socket. And the processing is different depending on this. Uh, you can check the system decordum service file as well as the system decordum socket file for details. Uh, like I mentioned, system decordum tries to log a core stack to the journal, including uh, function names using debug symbols. In order to do so, there is a dedicated uh, fork function in the system D, which forks. Uh, before that, it's dropping capabilities, it's changing U uh, Linux user and mount namespaces, and then calling uh, libdwarf from LC tools to parse symbols. Uh, the the whole purpose of this is to avoid an attacker crafting a malicious binary and taking over a uh, system decord dump uh, process, basically. Um, so libdwarf supports full debug symbol as well as mini debug info symbols. A few caveats, uh, since version 250, this uh, fork done in systemd attempts to change user namespace, and this fails silently if your kernel does not support user, user namespaces. Uh, I sent a PR to systemd, and in principle, the maintainer agrees that this is not the intended behavior since it should support system without uh, user namespaces. Uh, however, my PR needs to be reworked uh, before it can be merged. Um, so in Yocto, the default Linux Yocto kernel has this config enabled to support user namespace. However, if you are using a custom kernel or even in Yocto, if you are using the so-called uh, small kernel, which is uh, with, uh, used with the uh, kernel features equal small, then this option is missing. Um, I added the code below, which uses this flag uh, fork new user namespace at the moment. Um, so this is something to be aware of. Uh, caveat number two, for security reasons, 
systemd call dump is using some sandboxing options. The systemd service, basically the second instance of systemd call dump, which is running when the call dump is created. Uh, one such sandboxing option is protect home equal true, which basically makes your home directory completely invisible to a system decor dump. And for that reason, of course, it's unable to produce a call stack of your processes if they are running from slash home or slash root. And another sandboxing option is private temp equal yes, which is also enabled by default, uh, which totally makes sense on desktop distributions uh, but on embedded systems where you often have a read-only rootfs and you're debugging something in slash temp, which is sometimes the only read-write space you have, uh, this can be something to be aware of uh, because then you will not get uh, symbolicated call stacks. Uh, I sent a patch to systemd and I backported this to Pocky last week to at least change this to protect home equal read only. Uh, this was merged into to both repos. Um, the reason this was merged is that as this option was added, the system decor dump was still doing the processing of the core dumps in the main process. So this, they added this option for security reasons, but later this behavior or forking to a dedicated uh, process with less capabilities was added to address those security concerns. So now it's okay to have this uh, protect home equal read only. Um, so it, at least now with the latest master of uh, Pocky, it at least works in slash home, but still not under slash root and slash temp. Um, yeah, generally there are similar security issues with uh, set UID processes, or if you have uh, binaries which are not readable for security purposes, you will have the same kind of issues. Um, caveat number three, uh, when the normal process crashes, the core dump handler is called, etc. But in the particular case of uh, systemd service, um, there are timeout options uh, which are problematic. So if your process is running as a systemd service and is consuming a lot of memory, it could easily take 10 seconds to write the full core dump to the file system. Uh, the issue being that uh, once your service stop timeout is reached, the systemd system manager is sending sql to the process which immediately terminates it without waiting for the core dump creation. And so you will have the same result that your core dump will be truncated and the core stacks will not be printed to the journal as well. Um, so way to ways to mitigate this, uh, there are several. You can of course increase the timeout to stop your service but this is a trade-off since typically that's not what you want, especially for production, uh, where you want to restart as soon as possible if one of your services is crashing. One thing you can do is to use uh, storage equal none in cordump.conf. So basically the effect is that the cordump file is not stored and the cordumps are locked to the journal this is also a trade-off because once you lose the core dump file, you won't be able to debug with full debug symbols in case you need this later. Uh, but at least you will have the symbolicated core stacks inside your journal. Uh, and the last option is to reduce uh, which memory pages are being dumped. Uh, so there are several ways to do this. Uh, the most generic way is using the kernel parameter core dump filter. So you can uh, basically, for instance, remove uh, empty pages and this kind of things. Uh, and the less generic way of doing this is to use the syscall uh, mAdvise, where you can specify that a range of memory is uh, mAdvise don't dump. 
so typical use case would be if you have a big video, for instance, in your binary, which you know is completely useless inside the core dump, you could explicitly filter this out from your core dumps. So in summary, uh, core dumps are quite powerful to debug uh, hard to reproduce crashes, um, especially combined with a crash reporter, like for instance, Clitchip, which is a fork of a uh, century from the time it was still uh, BSD licensed. Um, so using a crash reporter, you can collect and aggregate the data of your core dumps and aggregate the aggregate them per function name, by binary name, etc. trigger alerts. Um, and I think just using core dumps with mini debug info and a crash reporter is a quite elegant solution for small projects uh, to have a reasonable uh, pipeline for handling this kind of crashes. Um, of course, if you have a bigger project, you can deal with full debug symbols and uh, storage of debug symbols for all your builds which are going to testing. And you can as well integrate this with your backend to, for instance, uh, you could have on, the, on your testing environments uh, targets without any debug symbols and you can symbolicate your call stacks on the backend size uh, just using build ID to match uh, binaries with their matching uh, debug symbols. Um, one nice option is also breakpad, which is uh, provided by MetaOpen Embedded. So breakpad is uh, creating mini dumps, which basically only contain uh, stack variables and no heap variables. So it's typically a lot uh, smaller than full core dumps. Uh, but this may be a nice match for your project if you are uh, limited in storage and bandwidth. And yeah, one last thing to mention is uh, this is best suited for the testing stage of projects. Um, in production, you typically have uh, user privacy concerns which you need to take into account. So it may not be doable at all to retrieve this kind of uh, core dumps and uh, the associated logs. So now let's talk about kernel dumps using Yocto. So kernel dumps is also a feature similar to uh, user space uh, core dumps, but used for the to debug kernel crashes. So it's a standard feature of the Linux kernel, which creates uh, crash dumps in an event of a kernel crash slash panic. Um, the way it works is that it boots a second kernel using the k exec call, which the second kernel then creates the files proc vm core, which contains the full memory used by the crash kernel. Uh, this k exec call is also used in a desktop distribution to have a faster reboots typically just to switch between two kernels without doing a full reboot. Um, the VM core file is a elf core file, which contains like all the physical memory used by the kernel. It also contains extra metadata uh, in the form of elf nodes uh, about processes running on each CPU. And it also contains your dmessage logs at the moment of the crash. This second kernel called capture kernel uses its own memory in order to preserve the crash kernel memory. And the way this is configured is that you append the kernel command line option called crash kernel with this format. So here in this example, equal 128 megabyte at 256 megabyte. The first value is the space which you allocate for your capture kernel and the second value is the offset to the beginning of memory where you want to load your capture kernel. Um, so kernel dumps are very useful to solve kernel crashes which are hard for, to reproduce and during the testing phases of your product. Uh, 
due to those extra memory requirements and extra reboot time, which, I mean, it's slowing down your reboot time. Uh, it's mostly not appropriate for production where you rather typically want to reboot as soon as possible if you have a kernel panic with something like uh, panic equal minus one as a common line parameter. As uh, a captured kernel needs to be loaded before a panic occurs. Uh, so doing this manually, you would use uh, key exec dash P for panic. Here in this example, you can see that the CFS report that the capture kernel is not loaded. Then I use this kexec p uh, to load the VM Linux uh, standard kernel as a capture kernel. So I reuse the same kernel in this example. Of course, for optimization pur purpose, you would use a much smaller kernel as a capture kernel. And I use this dash dash append option to basically append uh, common line parameters which will be used for the capture kernel. Uh, this key exec call can fail in various ways. Uh, so if your crash kernel common line parameter is not correct for your configuration or if it's not big enough to load your capture kernel, you will see this kind of error in var log messages saying that crash kernel reservation failed. Uh, you also need to support this uh, kexec syscall into your in your kernel with the kconfig uh, kexec option. So here you see again the error message in case this is not inside your kernel. And typically, you would not load this manually, but you would rather rely on the KDUB service, which is available in Yocto, and which uses this uh, script called uh, user libexec KDUB helper. Uh, here you see an excerpt. So this script has two roles. Uh, it's preloading the capture kernel when you boot your normal kernel. And it's also active when you are running in your capture kernel. Uh, it knows that you're in your capture kernel because it detects the presence of a file uh, proc VM core. And then it's uh, post processing this uh, VM core file, basically. So the post processing of the VM core file is done using a make dump file. Um, so the way this works is that the VM core, again, is a full physical memory used by your crash kernel, which is quite big usually. Uh, the make dump file on the one side is uh, filtering which pages you want to save. So for instance, you can remove uh, empty pages, you can remove uh, user space data, and this kind of thing. And it's also using this uh, kdump compressed format. Um, and then typically you would read this uh, kdump format using a crash, which was also created by Red Hat. Uh, make dump file can also generate files in L format, but it's not typical at all. Uh, the only reason to do this is if for some reason you would like to use GDB only, uh, because the files are a lot bigger in that case. Um, yeah. You can filter certain kernel modules which you don't want to be in your dumps. Uh, two reasons to do this are uh, reducing the size of your kernel dumps as well as uh, security concerns. And uh, make dump file is using a metadata called VM core info from the VM core file uh, to interpret the VM core file. So this metadata contains things like page size, as well as a kernel address randomization offset. Um, so how to enable this in Yocto? Uh, the key exec tools are provided directly in Pocky. Uh, crash and make them file are available in meta open embedded. Um, so I added here an example. Uh, using image install append, you would add those uh, three packages. I also added uh, GDB as an alternative to crash, but it's not really needed. 
Um, KXEC tools does not work at all without make dump file, um, but there is no air depends at the moment. I think it's because uh, make dump file is in meta open embedded while KXEC tools is in Pocky. I just asked on the mailing list to clarify. It should probably be cleaned up. You as well need to change your kernel configuration to be able to enable kernel dump. Uh, you need to have config debug info enabled to have kernel debug symbols. Uh, it's enabled per default in Linux Yocto. You need to enable the kexec six core and you need to enable the creation of the proc VM core file. So this example is on a 6.6 .6 kernel using uh, one of the two supported kernels currently in the, main, in the master branch of Pocky. Uh, you need to use the kernel image type VM Linux. Uh, the reason being that since this was created by Red Hat, their main use case was uh, VM Linux since this is what they are using. Uh, so at the moment there is no support for BZ image or alternative format. Um, so specifically, make dump file and crash support only the VM Linux format. Uh, you need to make the kernel debug symbols accessible by make dump file. So for instance, in the Linux Yocto recipe, you can use a BB append to add uh, inhibit package strip as well as inhibit package debug split. Uh, so that the full debug symbols are available in the VM Linux file. And here in my testing, I just needed to uh, increase the amount of memory available to QMU, since that's what I use for testing. So I, I increase the QB mem, as well as the size of the rootfs in order to be able to store the kernel dumps. And of course, you need to add the crash kernel parameter to your command line. So with QMU, you would use this uh, QB kernel command line append variable. So just for testing purpose, I added uh, 500 megabytes with an offset of 256 megabytes. Uh, of course, this is not optimized at all, but this was just for testing purpose. So this can be optimized a lot. Um, at the moment, this is not an official Yocto distro feature, so there is no testing of uh, kernel dumps during the Yocto releases. Uh, so for that reason, it may not work immediately outside of the box. Uh, so during my testing, uh, it was failing with kernel 6.10 for some reason. Uh, the kdump kernel, the, I mean the capture kernel was crashing after the reboot. Um, I just used kernel 6.6 .6 since uh, anyway, I just wanted to test the feature. Uh, so this was not really relevant. Uh, I think it's not so hard to make it work, but just be aware that this may not work outside of the box, uh, out, of, out of the box. And I also had some failure while testing with QMU x86, uh, again, invalid memory segment. Uh, didn't investigate further, I just did this with the QMU power PC instead. So, uh, testing this in QMU, once you have enabled everything, you would use a proc system request trigger to trigger a kernel panic manually. Um, normally, Everything would then happen automatically. VM core file is created and the kernel dump is created and your system reboots automatically. Uh, just for testing purpose, I disabled the automatic reboot. Um, so this is what happens once you're in your capture kernel. You can see that the kernel command line is uh, appended with the uh, options which you provided with kexec-p. You also see that your DMSH logs uh, indicate that you're in the KDUM boot. And the file proc VM core is uh, created by the kernel. Then what KExec, uh, I mean, what the KDUM service would be doing is call make them file 
to create the KDOM uh, file, which is compressed. But here I called it manually just to show the, how this works. Um, so make dump file dash D is just debug log option. Uh, sorry, the dash big D is just the debug log option. The dash D31 is this uh, filtering option indicating which uh, pages you want to remove from the VM core file. And then the dash X VM Linux option is used to provide the path of the VM Linux file, including debug symbol, so that uh, make dump file can use this to create the, the core stacks of all your um, running processes. And typically those uh, dump files are saved to var, crash, and current date. Um, here I just wanted to show that uh, make dump file per default is not doing any filtering. So if you call it without this uh, dash D option, basically the VM core file, which was 1.6 gigabyte here, as it looks, is the same size as your KDOM file. Um, but with this uh, filtering dash D31 option, uh, which is removing all the empty pages, etc., cetera, uh, the KDOM file was only 16 megabytes in this case. So it's uh, significantly smaller. And then once you have those KDOM file, you can process them with a crash, uh, which is provided by Meta Open Embedded. So here you can see the way it works. You just call crash with the VM Linux file as parameter as well as your KDOM file. And it's quite a powerful tool, so you can get a backtrace, uh, including function names of your current running uh, thread. You can also use commands like ps to see all the running processes, uh, mount to see which file system are mounted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you can even generate ftrace files with uh, plugins. So this is quite a powerful tool. Um, there are a few caveats. Uh, Crash was initially developed by Red Hat, again, x86 being their main use case. Uh, so at the moment, there is only support for kernel address space layout randomization only for x86. Uh, there is only a stub for any other architecture. Um, so of course, your, if this is enabled in your kernel with a config random by space, your core stacks will not work at all. Um, so the easiest way to mitigate this is to use a uh, no KA SLR for your testing environment, um, simply to have usable kernel dumps. Um, of course, this is not suitable for production because of security concerns. So, in conclusion, uh, kernel dump sim similar to user space core dumps uh, coupled with a crash reporter is a really powerful tool to debug uh, crashes early in your project with a nice testing environment. Uh, it makes it significantly easier and faster to solve this kind of uh, kernel crashes for your top projects. And that's it. So thank you for coming. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs>
uh, to pass around these issues if you're using the filters that you've described. So at the moment, I'm using full core dumps for the project I'm working on. Uh, I mean, like I mentioned, there is this uh, mini dump format, uh, which is provided uh, in Meta Open Embedded. Maybe this matches better your use case. Um, in a I, sense, I didn't knew back then. We just found out these others and yeah. Mm. Uh, for the for the core dumps, caveat number three, you mentioned that um, there's some filtering that you can do uh, when you're allocating memory or something. But what about with the system D core dump, the first uh, core dump handler? Could you also tell it which services or which processes you actually want to even core dump and not all of them? I mean, the first one is respecting this. Uh kernel command line option. So if you are filtering pages using this option, the, it will be respected by the first one. Um, basically, the, the, the kernel is respecting this. And, um, yeah, um, maybe you could put the caveat number three up uh, for your core demo. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there, so you, you said that yeah, so what I'm wondering is other possible fixes other than other than uh, the ones you've listed. Is there a way to instruct the uh, system D core dump to not dump processes or services that are not in your like filter list? You mean dump only specific services? Yes. Um, maybe you need to check the core dump .conf options. Uh, I don't know by heart. Thank you. Okay, thank you.